50. All right, so um, I did find out I do have to be at the event or logged into my event at 11 o'clock, so I can't be with you this morning. But um, I'm going to record this lecture so that you can work through the things that we would have done in class and stay caught up with um, the things that we're doing. So what I wanted to do first was just give you the answers to your homework. So if you take a look at this table here, this is what your answers should look like for those different things um, using the different symbols in Egyptian. Um, so I, I use the at symbol for that swirly thing here. So you've got um, one that represents 100. Each of the horseshoes is 10, so two of those for 20 and 1 and so forth, okay? Um, and then you've got your symbol for a 1,000 down here, okay? For Roman, you've got the different ideas here. So you've got 100 is the C, 20 and 1, uh, Xs are 10 and 1. And then here's your 42. Um, uh, new symbol here, L is 50. So you've got 50, 60, 70, 80. And then this is also a new thing here. When you want to do 9 or 4, you put a 1 in front of um, a larger symbol, and that is a subtraction kind of indication. That's really the only um, new concept from the from the Egyptians there um, with Romans. And then down at the bottom, you've got, again, um, the new symbol here is 1,000, so the M. Um, C in front of M is 900, so it's like 1,000 minus 100. And then you've got your 50, 60, 70, 80. And then, again, 1 in front of 10 would be 10 minus 1 or 9. Okay, so um, Chinese you're looking at, here's your 100, your 20, your 1. Um, here's your, your so your 10s in Chinese basically are attached. They're um what do you call it? Vertical lines attached to your kind of cup shape. So there's your 40, there's your 2, um, 80, you've got your symbol here, and then 9 actually has its own symbol in Chinese. And then you've got um, 1,989, okay? So that's how that would look. And it's always those, those combinations of things. Um, you've got less symbols, I think, in Chinese, or it's hard to tell. Um, but you kind of add new things onto them every time you want to say something different, okay? And then here in Greek, you've got your 100, your 20, your 1. That's pretty straightforward. Then when you get to 89, you start to get, um, when you want to do a 5 of something, you've got kind of this little hangman symbol with the, um, with the other symbol attached to it. So this represents five tens here, and then uh, three more tens, and then your, um, your 9, your 5, and your 9. Uh, five and your four ones, I'm sorry. And then here you've, you're looking at, here's your thousand, and then you've got your hangman with the H this time to represent 500, right? And then you've got, um, oh, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking yeah, we need probably two more H's here. Okay. So there's your, there's 500 and then uh, you want four more of those. And then here you've got your um, 800, so you've got 50, and then three more of those, and then you're five, and then you're like so. All right, so those are the those are the um, historical mathematical symptoms. Sim what am I trying to say? Systems that do not have place value in them. Okay, when that began was here in the Babylonian and the Mayan era. So those two both used place value systems. So your mini homework, and this is a small homework, this can be done. You can scribble it on a piece of paper. That's fine. You don't have to type it or anything unless you want to. That's fine. Um, so what you want to do is the Babylonians only had two marks. And basically these marks were because they chiseled things into tablets. So they had a, a stamp that was this shape and they had a stamp that was this shape and so you run out very quickly of ways to you know you want it you don't want to stamp things on tablets forever and ever and ever when you've got a thousand you need to have to do a hundred of these so they began using place values okay they didn't have a zero but they did have place values so your job is to look up what were the place values in Babylonian okay and um, tell me what the first three place values are and we'll talk about like in our system the place values the first ones are ones tens and hundreds so what are their first three place values in Babylonian okay and you'll understand a little more about that too when we're done with our work today and then in the Mayan system they had three symbols they had a one they had a five which was a line and then they had a zero okay and they did it was like a pot pie it looked like a little kind of an eye with a little thing like that, that I call it a pot pie, or you could look at this as a closed eyelid, I'm not sure. Um, and Mayan used a different um, place value system. So figure out what the number was, the base, base number was for Babylonian and the base number was for Mayan, and identify those first three place values and then write the number 121 in each, okay? So there is a um, MO2 Dropbox for you to do that on, and uh, go ahead and Google it, I don't mind. You just tell me what your website was that you found it on when you're finished.
and then we'll be good to go. All right, so for today's work, what we'd like to do is, let me pick a good pen color here. I think blue would work. Oh, let's do cyan here. I think that, let me just test that out. Yep, that'll be good. Okay, so what we're going to talk about first is our base 10 system. And that's what we're going to do for all of the work that we do in the next few weeks. We're going to talk about how we do things, and then we're going to talk about how to do it in other bases because what I want to do is take you out of your comfort zone and kind of put you in that situation where kids will be when you um, are working with them on these new, because there really is a foreign concept. Most of what we understand as base 10 is just conventional, and you pick it up by dealing with it a lot in your daily life. So what I want to do is make it um, a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit explicit so that we understand um, what kids are trying to figure out as they're working on bases with us, okay, as they're working on base 10 with us. So we use base 10, which means we, we have 10 symbols. We use 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, okay? Because we have 0 in there, there are 10 of these symbols. When we get to 9, we wrap around and start to use the next place value, okay? And the reason we do that with 10, if you think about, just hold your hands up in a, in a minute, you know, you've got 10 fingers, so we were able to count to 10, and then we had to make a mark somewhere to symbolize that I had a group of 10 done already, and then I could start counting on my fingers again. So base 10 is very logical as far as our anatomy, okay? So um, what I want to talk about then, again, is those place values in base 10. So I'm going to start uh, over here. I'm just going to make these place values. I'm going to sketch them out for you. All right, so let's go to the fifth one. We'll start there, okay? So we, we start with ones, okay? And then our next place value is tens. And our next place value is one hundreds. And then thousands, right? And it keeps going. It doesn't stop after five. You all know that. But um, we'll just do five for today's example. So, and then ten thousands. Okay. So these are our place values. Now you might wonder, okay, what, how are they related? Why, why do we pick those? Right. So the idea is that, like I said, we have ones, and once we get to nine ones, then we want to make a mark in the next place value. We want to represent something over here. And once we represent the thing over here, that means we have a group of 10, okay? Now, when we get to 10 of these, that's when we want to dump over into the next place value. So 100s are 10 tens, okay? So every 100 is a group of 10 tens. And we're going to use that a lot when we do our mathematics, our arithmetic back and forth. We're going to do addition, subtraction. You know, we, we trade in hundreds for 10 tens. We trade in 10 tens for hundreds. We go back and forth all the time when we're doing our arithmetic. And then when you get 10 one hundreds, you have a thousand. When you get 10 thousands, you have a 10,000, obviously. Okay, so I want to just point something out here, too. So we've got 10 is kind of the base number here, okay? A 100 is actually 10 times 10, and we represent that, we can represent that by 10 to the second power exponents here, okay? Um, and then 1,000 is 10 to the third power. 10,000 is 10 to the fourth power, okay? Now, if you work this backwards, what we're looking at here is a 1 is 10 to the 0 power. Now, that may be counterintuitive. You may think the 0 power should be equal to 0, but it's not. Um, when you're um, doing exponential work, what you're doing is you're multiplying the same number over and over and over again times itself, okay? And when you don't multiply it at all, which, where you land is the identity element or the, the, the multiplicative number that doesn't change any other number. So that's why any number to the zero power is one. And we will revisit that again when we talk about exponents, okay? So take my word for it here. So now we've got 10 to the zero power, 10 to the first, 10 to the second, 10 to the third, 10 to the fourth. So that's what's going on with our place values, okay? So just a quick example. Um, I'm just going to throw some numbers down here. Um, so what that means then is when I have a number like this, okay, I uh, represent, each one of those numbers represents not just itself as a digit, but it represents a place value. So three really represents three ten thousands or 30,000. Seven represents 7,000. Eight represents 800. Four represents 40 and five, so forth. Okay, this is all stuff you should know and understand, but this is where we start with kids. Okay, we try to explain what place values are so that we can use them later on in our mathematics. Okay, all right. So moving on to uh, something unusual, all right? So we're going to talk about, first of all, base 8. So we're going to imagine that somebody has 8 fingers. Um, characters you might know that have 8 fingers would be Mickey Mouse, has 4 fingers on each hand, so a total of 8, 
Um, or you could think about, I don't know if you, any of you watch this anymore, Bart Simpson has eight fingers, okay? So you can think about Bart Simpson math or Mickey Mouse math, um, and it is base eight, okay? So how would their math be different from our math? How would that look? Well, let's think about the first few place values in their mathematics, okay? So here's the good news. Every single base, no matter what base we're working on, everybody uses units, everybody uses singles. So you're always gonna have a ones place to start your math, okay? And the very next place value is always gonna be that group of how many, do, how many can I make before I have to make a mark, okay? So since these folks have eight fingers, they're gonna be able to do eight, and then they're gonna to have to make a mark here to represent that they have a group of eight, okay? Now notice too, in, in base eight, we're gonna be using zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We will not use the number eight because when we get to eight, that would be represented with one here, okay? And then no units. All right, so let's, um, and continuing on here so now again we're doing powers of uh, instead of doing powers of 10 like we did in base 10 we're doing powers of 8 so we've got this is 8 to the 0 power we've got 8 to the first power we've got this will be 8 to the second power so this will be 8 groups of 8 we'll make our next place value because we can do 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 in here when we get to 8 we have to go over here so this place value has to represent 8 groups of 8 8 groups of 8 is 64 all right, so again, and that's eight squared. If we went another base or another level, right? So then we would be looking at eight groups of 64. And it's fine to have a calculator handy while you're thinking about this today. If you don't know these numbers off the top of your head, some of them get a little bit large, all right? So eight groups of 64, we're looking over here at a 512s place value, all right? So that, and again, that's eight to the third power. If we were going to go again, we would want eight groups of 512, that would be 4,096s would be the next place value here. But that's bigger than what we need in order to um, divvy up 600 things, okay? So what I'm doing here, and let me introduce some, some of this notation that you're looking at here. So 600 right now is, and I put a tiny 10 here, it is a base 10 number. So that's our number 600, okay? Down here is an example of a number that is not our number. This is a Mickey Mouse number. It's got the tiny eight down at the bottom to remind us that it is in base eight, okay? So what we're doing here, when we change 600 in our number into Mickey Mouse numbers, or into base eight numbers, or Bart Simpson numbers, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those 600 things and we're gonna put them in these little buckets, okay? So in the, we're gonna put them in groups of 512 and 64 and eight and one, okay? So what we'll start out by doing, I think, is we'll, we'll probably, let's, let's take the biggest chunk out of there that we can. So I see that in 600, I've got at least one group, I've got exactly one group of 512. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that um, into consideration and I'm gonna say, okay, I've got my 600 and I'm using up 512 of that in that first place value. I'm gonna put a one here representing, I've got one group of 512. What is left is 88, okay? So then I can see that, oh, okay, I can make a group of 64 out of that. So I'm gonna take one and put it here and I'm gonna say I've got one group of 64 and I've used that up. So what do I have left? And again, you can have your calculator handy if you want to or you can do these you know, with your mathematical skills. Okay, I've got 24 left, so I can make how many groups of eight? Now I can make more than one, can't I? I've got three groups of eight sitting there if that's 24. So three goes there. And now once I've used up three groups of eight, so let me just write on the side, this is three groups of eight, okay? And once I've used that up, I've got nothing left. So what do I do with this place value? Well, I need to write a zero here to represent that I had no place, no zeros left because, or no units left, sorry. So because when I write this number, I'm going to write it like so, okay? And I want to represent that I've got nothing in the ones place and that this three is already in the eights place, all right? So that's an example of how to change um, 600 into base eight. So let's work backwards, okay? So if we had the number five, three, six, and notice I'm not saying 536 because that's not what that is. This is five, three, six in base eight. So again, the six represents ones, 
Now in base 8, the 3 represents 8s and the 5 represents 64s. Okay, so what number is this? Okay, let's find out. So we've got, what, what do we, we just look at what we're looking at here. What is it that's represented here? I have 5 groups of 64. So 5 times 64 plus 3 groups of 8. Okay, 3 groups of 8 plus six singles, or just six ones, all right? So what does that represent? Again, calculators can be fine here. So five groups of 64 would be 320. So that first place value with the five, and it represents actually 320. Three times eight represents 24, and then we've got six. So all together we have just want to be careful that I just if I get this right here. So this is 30 here, so I'm looking at 320 plus 30, which is uh, 350. So, oops, I lost my pen here. Okay, 350. So that is 350 in our math. So that's a base 10 number, 350, is represented by 536 in base 8. All right. So let's do one more here. So now this is a different base. This is base 5. We're going to call this base um, lefty math. Let's just pretend that we're only using one hand, okay? So one of our hands has five fingers on it. So after we count to five, we're going to have to make a new, a new place value, right? All right, so in base five, we will use only the digits zero, one, two, three, and four. Once we get to five, we're going to make a mark in the next place value. All right, so um, we're going to need to figure out what are our place values in base five. I'm not sure how many we're going to need to get past 600 so that we can make it useful, but let's let's start working here. So we've got ones, we've got fives. Five groups of five will be 25s. Five groups of 25 will be 125s. Okay. Five groups of 125s will be 625s. All right, so that looks like probably we're, we're beyond where we need to be there already. Okay, if we were going to go one more, it would be 3,125s. Okay, so again, these place values are the powers of 5. So we've got 5 to the 0 power, 5 to the 1st power, 5 to the 2nd power, 5 to the 3rd power, 5 to the 4th power, and so forth. Okay, so just like in base 10 where we had powers of 10, now we're looking at powers of 5. Okay, now these we won't use for changing 600, so these are kind of extra right now, but they're, they exist. All right, so looking at this now, how many, um, let's see, I can't make any 625, so I have to go to the 125s place. So how many groups of 125 can I make out of 600? So a couple ways to do that, you can add 125 until you figure out um, how, many weight, how many times you can do it. Um, or you can divide 600 by 125, and the whole number that you get will be what you're looking for. So I see that we can make four groups of 125 out of 600. So I'm just going to do my math on the side here to keep track of what's left. So when I do four groups of 125, and four is a nice number for me too because I can multiply by four easily. I can double this and double it again, and I've got four of them. So when I doubled it the first time, I've got 250. When I double it again, I've got 500. So four groups of 125 uses up 500 of my 600, and I've got 100 left. Oops, there we go. And then what I do is I look at these other place values. How do I distribute that 100? Oh, look at this. I've got 25s as my next. Um, place value and I can do four of those and that will use up the rest of my hundred it won't it okay so in this one this is pretty easy and then we just plop a couple of placeholders in here zero and zero so when I'm changing this to base five I've get four four zero zero base five okay and then looking back here um, now an example going backwards so we start with a base five number three two three Oops, I wrote it backwards, but that's a good idea. So 3, 2, 3. Now, again, remind yourself, what are the place values here? This is 1s, this is 5s, this is 25s. All right? So what this number is is it's 3 groups of 25 and 2 groups of 5 and 3 more. So this would be 75 here. This would be 10. So that's 85, and three more would be 
88 is the number we're looking at there. So that 3, 2, 3, written in base 5, is our base 10 number, 88. All right. So what you're going to do now is you're going to look in your packet, and this is um, right in the beginning of the packet. You're going to look at this um, particular page, and what your job is to do is make sure that you write the number. We're going to take 37. Okay, so our number 37, and we're going to have write it in all these different bases. So actually base 10, look at that, base 10 will be done for you because it's 37, okay, and base 10. And you can write the tiny number or not. Now, mathematicians like to be lazy, so what we prefer to do is not write the 10 when it's actually a base 10 number. We usually only write the tiny number when it's a different base number, but for the purposes of today, we'll write this in just so we can practice that new idea. Okay, so what you're going to do with each of these is you're going to decide what are the place values in each of these, okay? So some of these you know because we did base 5, we did base 8. You're going to figure out the place values, and then you're going to sort those 37 things into those place values. So pause the video right now, give this a try yourself, and then when you're ready to press play, you can check yourself, okay? And um, I'll do the work um, and fill it in and you can check yourself. Okay, so as you're looking at these, um, so 
for these last ones, so like we're looking at three groups of 12, which is 36, plus one left over, three groups of 11, which is 33, plus four ones, and so forth. So you can work your way backwards and see that these are the answers for each of these, okay? So in, for instance, back, way back in base two, we've got one group of 32, and then we've got thir five left to distribute, so four goes, we can do a group of four and a group of one and so forth, then you put your zeros in. All right, so what you notice too is that as you get up in the bases, as bases get larger, you, the representation of your same number gets smaller. Look at, because each of these buckets is small, 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 so we keep having to use the bigger buckets in order to represent the numbers. So this number looks really long in base two, but it looks very small in base 12, okay? All right, um, so next, slide here. So this is a reminder of your homework, things that you should be doing for Friday. So again, look up those Mayan and Babylonian place values. And what we want for each of those is a one, oops, sorry, is a, uh, get my pen going here. All right, so what we want for each of those, for Mayan and for Babylonian, is a one, two, three. What are those place values? One, two, three. And you know, the first one's going to be ones, and then this will be whatever base number you're in. And what's that third one look like, okay? Um, if you have not done the syllabus quiz yet in MO2, do that. Read through the syllabus and then take the quiz. You, um, your score will be the best of your two tries. I missed a parentheses there. And then look over page five. Just You don't have to memorize any of this yet. We'll be talking about it as we go along um, over the next few class periods. And then... Um, practice this new skill that you have of base translating by doing number one on page seven. And there is a video answer posted on MO2 so that you can check your answers. All right. And I will see you next time.